Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter one. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. <laughs> Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Wonderful! I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Ooh, ooh. 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 
Rollo looked to the side suspiciously. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. obligation. One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Disturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Oh my! This is quite 
exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. A sturdy old wheelbarrow. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Everyone involved. for the day. The best lies are built on truth. <laughs> Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Just gonna go ponder for the day. <laughs> this was Lucas' chance to sell his alibi. Nailed it. <laughs> Chapter 2 Welcome to Beacon Pines 
For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered. Until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was, a tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard.
Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? Luca tied a shoestring to what fish could resist a nice shoestring? Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook, good for skimming the surface. <laughs> 